Welcome to Street Stories. Tonight, a Street Stories exclusive on the standoff at Waco. Were federal agents doomed from the start? One agent who was there puts his career on the line and tells his shocking story to Bob McEwen later in our broadcast. But first, at the heart of that long standoff near Waco, Texas, is the bloody event that started it all, the failed raid by federal agents on the cult compound. There's still much debate about why the raid ended so disastrously. But tonight, in a Street Stories exclusive, Bob McEwen talks to one agent who was there, a man who now risks his career to speak out about that fateful day in February and what he believes may have cost four of his colleagues their lives. When you're out there and you're covered up in gunfire and the air above you is full of lead, and the bullets are hitting around you and ricocheting and blowing up and you can't hear yourself think because of the gunfire. It's a little different than watching that on television where everybody gets up and gets to walk away when it's all over. But that's, that's not what it was. We can't show you his face or use his real name. We've replaced his voice so it can't be recognized. I think that because of what happened on February 28th and the way things went, considering how badly they went, but there's a lot of people that feel that the things that happened weren't necessary and would like to speak out, but they're afraid to. We've agreed to call him Joe, and what we can tell you about him is that he is an experienced agent with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And the story he has to tell, he says, the ATF doesn't want you to hear. Have you been told not to talk about this? Oh yeah, all of us were told from the standpoint of this is our problem, let's keep it in house, let's clean it up. And they try to make it all just disappear into the sunset and hopefully everyone forgets about it. But it's never been the case where we've lost four agents. And this, this is not something that's gonna go away. But on that Sunday morning in Waco, when almost a hundred armed federal agents moved along country roads towards the Branch Davidian compound, the ATF assumed that everything would go as planned. So going into it, what was the key to this? What was going to determine whether it would fail or succeed? The key to it at that point, if you had to pick out one specific thing that was a key, that was the element of surprise. You had to have that. It was supposed to have been what the ATF calls a dynamic entry. Within minutes, they would get into the compound, secure the building, and surprise cult leader David Koresh with search and arrest warrants. But that's not what happened. Get that camera out of here! Get out of here! Get Joe was among the first wave of agents inside the compound. Have you seen this tape before? No, I have not. Can you describe what you see? We were being beat, beaten back. The ATF told the agents they would find the male cult members working outside, away from the women, the children, and the weapons. Joe says agents also expected there would be four helicopters for diversion. There was absolutely nobody away from the buildings as there should have been, especially the men. And the helicopters were not there as a diversion as they should have been. We knew at that point that, that things had definitely, had definitely gone very badly. What Joe says he didn't know at the time was that three ATF helicopters had already been hit by gunfire and forced down. There was no limit to the amount of ammunition that they had. They fired on us with 22s. They fired on us with 50 caliber weapons. They used hand grenades. They used assault rifles. It adds up to a plan that was very poorly conceived. It was never even considered that we might be beaten. Who do you blame for that? I blame ATF for that. The ATF raided the cult in the first place because it was believed to have illegal automatic weapons, a lot of them. Yet only six of the 90 agents in the raid carried assault rifles. Joe says when he and others asked to bring more along, the ATF said no. ATF did not let us go in there as prepared as we could be, expected us to go in there and win a machine gun battle with a pocket knife. They weren't just outgunned. Joe says that he and many others ran out of ammunition before the firefight was over. There were bodies laying everywhere, and shot and some of them did Let's go. Turn Where? Right was there a moment when it could have been stopped when it could have been turned around 
at the staging area. From that point on, it was a loose cannon, literally. It was a monster that had taken a life of its own. There was no stopping at that point. It was at the staging area, several miles from the compound, that the agents made their final preparations for the raid. And it was there, Joe says, that the operation should have been stopped before it began. At about 9.15, 9.20 that morning, one of the supervisors starts running up and down the line of agents where they're out there getting geared up and getting ready to get into these horse trailers. And he's yelling and screaming at everybody to hurry up, get geared up. He said, we need to go. They know we're coming. The result was one of the bloodiest days in U.S. law enforcement history. There was no contingency plan that you were presented with at all? No. Nothing built in about what happens if we have to retreat, what happens if we're outgunned, or what happens if we lose the element of surprise, and it backfires on us. The element of surprise is a key issue, of course, and in this situation, uh, the element of surprise was obviously lost. We spoke by a satellite from Waco with ATF official David Troy about what Joe says. You say the element of surprise was lost in this operation. When did the ATF become aware of that? That is a key piece of information. There is no way we would have executed that raid if the people running the operation would have realized that the element of surprise was lost. That would have been, obviously, a suicidal mission. We were not aware at that point in time and did not become aware that, that the element of surprise was lost until they opened fire on us. Well, Mr. Troy, you may be aware that we have spoken to one of your agents who was part of that operation on February the 28th. I heard that, yes. He has told us the following. I'm going to quote, you, quote it directly so there's no mistake as to what he told us. Okay. He said at the staging area, several miles from the compound, at about, this is a quote now, at about 9.15, 9.20 that morning, one of the supervisors starts running up and down the line of agents where they're out there getting geared up, and he's yelling and screaming at everybody to hurry up. He said, we need to go, they know we're coming. How do you respond to that? All, all I can tell you, Bob, is if the supervisory staff that was in charge of this raid was, was aware and convinced that the element of surprise was lost, there's no way we were going to go driving in there and execute a warrant because the element of surprise was a key factor. So here's an operation where surprise is the key, and 45 minutes before you intend to raid the place, one of your superiors is telling you they know you're coming. Yeah, and for us to hurry up and get there as fast as we can. People may think they have heard something that, didn't, that wasn't said exactly the way they now recall it 30 days later. I think that is a possibility. Will I reject and discount absolutely? There's no way that statement could have been made. No, of course not, because I wasn't there and I don't know what was said. The agent to whom we spoke said that he and others went to superiors before the raid and asked for assault, assault rifles because they feared they would be necessary. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not aware of that, but, but let me respond to that concept. I think a lot of people are jumping to a conclusion that that would have meant we would have won the gun battle and we wouldn't be in a siege standoff. But I contend to you, if we'd had 50 or 60 AR-15s in the hands of our agents, we would have had a body count inside that house, probably including many women and children, which would have been unbelievable. This was a massacre. It shouldn't have been four dead people and 16 laid out there, shot all to pieces. You're telling me that all those men, but the men who died in particular, gave everything for the agency, and you believe the agency let them down? I do, absolutely, that's true. Is that part of the reason why you're doing this? That's the only reason. That's the only reason. officials in Texas are now looking into the deaths of the four federal agents and whether cult members were tipped off on the raid. Meantime, the Treasury Department, which oversees the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, will investigate further and is expected to convene an independent panel 